Hello everyone, welcome back to a Born Again original. This is going to be a, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a different one or a shorter one. Because every time I say that, um, it ends up being like 20 minutes long. <laughs> but we're going to be exploring like, the weird circumstances surrounding uh, Brett or, uh, Owen Hart's death, sorry. Um, maybe some stuff about the Hart family that I found interesting. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for still sticking around the channel while I, uh, am doing less uploads and, and all that, you know, um, I really try to make when I upload, it's actually worthwhile or a topic that I'm actually interested in. So yeah, I will, uh, start the video off. We're going to go to probably the Hart family, um, Wikipedia page. <clears throat> so the Hart Wrestling family is a uh, known as the Hart Dynasty. You know, uh, the person who started it was Stu Hart. He's a legend in the Calgary scene or the pro wrestling scene. He owned a territory. He owned Stampede Wrestling. Um, we're gonna go down. They have, I think it was like. 12 kids, something like that, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten kids, so, ten of them, I would say, uh, Stu Hart had a really, like, hard upbringing in the, uh, wilderness, he, when he was a child, he had all his belongings burned, because, his uh, dad got into it with the government over some land, a land deed. So the police came and they burned all their belongings and they ended up in Calgary. So he started, he ended up wrestling and then turned into pro wrestling. I'm going to be honest when I say I couldn't find much about them about and the occult. So... The weirdest thing I could find about the, this family is maybe the fact Bruce, um, when he was 33, he dated a child. So, like a former uh, student of his. And so... A connection that I thought was really interesting is this is a massive family. They all were trained to be wrestlers their whole lives. Um, they took the business very serious. Another family that had a lot of struggles and a lot of um, interesting things surrounding them is uh, the Von Erichs. So the Von Erichs, this guy, he, Jack Barden Atkinson, he started out with that name, obviously, and then Stu gave him the persona of like a Nazi, like, um, yeah, like a Nazi scientist or something, some type of soldier. And if you know anything about the Nazis, the MK Ultra, they did all sorts of experiments on people. But it's like just so hard to say because it could have just been like for the show, but. When you think of that, and then think that every one of his kids died by either a suicide or a mysterious death, like Kevin Von Erich's the only one left alive. There's David, who died from possibly a pill overdose in, in China. They say acute enteritis, but when wrestlers deal with pain, they they deal with it through alcohol and they deal with it through painkillers. It, it was possibly a mix between the two. He was only 25 when he died. So that's very sad. So let's just, that was the first of the mis the weird deaths. The second one, or no, this is not the second one. This is going to be like the last one, I think. <clears throat> he shot himself and he was 33 years old. And if you know anything about the occult, that could be an occult number. Um, 
Mike Von Erich, he got hurt in Israel of all places, um, and ended up with some brain damage from a surgery. Uh, so it was personal life. Yeah. Having to be David. And it, the Prince von Eric had a ranking system for his children, so it really makes sense that um, he would end up killing himself. And then this guy, he he was too young and he was too small to really like get into it. Um, he had some bone issues. Either way, all of his sons are dead. All mysterious circumstances, suicide. It could have been because of the upbringing. But you also ha can't help but think of maybe there's an occultic influence. Maybe they're programmed to kill themselves after a certain time if they don't complete their goal of being like a world champion wrestler. I don't know. Um, that's just how this how MK Ultra works and all that. We're gonna move on from the Von Erics because I just wanted to leave that in there because it's very interesting to me. If you guys have any more theories about that, let me know. Um, but we're going to get into Owen Hart and his death and the circumstances surrounding it. So, so Montreal screw job. This is where the, all it started maybe before, um, Stu owned the Calgary, like he owned the wrestling territory. I believe it was from Calgary to like Minnesota, possibly. He sold it to Vince McMahon for around, let's say, a million dollars today. Vince never paid the family or anything. So there was already a little bit of friction there um, behind the scenes. But they didn't want to push it because this was back in the 80s. Um, and the Hart family was starting to get jobs with the WWE. And the WWE seemed to be the future of like the wrestling business, obviously. So they didn't want to sever ties, they didn't want to try to sue him, they didn't want to mess anything up for their kids making a lot of money in this company. Um, Montreal Screwjob, Bret Hart, he did not want to drop the title to Shawn Michaels because, you know, in his brain it didn't make sense. If you know anything about Bret Hart, he takes wrestling very serious. He really wants the realism in, in WWE, he takes it so serious. He takes himself very serious, too. It's actually almost funny when you watch interviews of him, how seriously he takes himself. And I, when you're at the pinnacle of, like, your craft, like, you're a performer, it's easy to get in your head and to think that your opinion is right over everybody else's. Fair enough. Um, it's just a clash of egos here. Um, they rung the bell early. Gave the belt to Shawn Michaels. That ended up with stuff backstage with uh, Bret Hart knocking Vince McMahon unconscious um, with an uppercut. Uh, so, Bret Hart, I've left the detail out that he signed a deal with like the direct competitor right before this. Um, WCW... And so, to I don't understand what he really expected. Like, why would he allow... I don't even know. Don't matter. It's not, aside from the actual topic. Um, They had all this stuff going on. Hart departed. Um, Then Owen really wanted to leave, right? Like, Owen was asking to get out of his contract. Okay, so this was in... 1997, November 9th, 1997, we'll, we'll go to Owen Hart, <laughs> Owen Hart, where are you buddy, come on, oh, why am I so, like I can't not find this, there we go. Owen Hart, 1999. Owen Hart was trying to get out of his uh, contract. Because his brother like got screwed over. Like He was not comfortable being there. He was not comfortable working for Vince. He was not um, just happy. 
So he tried to get out. I'm going to try to see if I can find like a little story in Reddit or something about it. So here's Owen Hart five months before his death. Um, when my contract is up, I'm out of wrestling. I've made plans. I've been smart with my financial affairs. I'll be, I'll be sad. I really want to devote a lot of my time to property. Or not property family. I plan on doing a boating and fishing and continue to stay in shape. And who knows, I might do 10 weeks a year in Japan. Just something to keep me motivated, keep me in shape, keep me involved. A little bit not to have to deal with the politics, the pressures that are so intense right now. Um, a lot of guys have to get down to reality when they get out of wrestling. There's not much for them. Layman's job, pumping gas, whatever. Yeah, it's kind of sad. You see wrestlers who are big time stars and they get out of wrestling and there's nothing. This business is very addictive. Keep going down. He's just basically saying he wants to get out of wrestling. He needs to wants to focus on his family. He wants to do all this. Um, I had all kinds of jobs, and of course, wrestling. I sold programs, set up rings. I used to be a music man. I went for three years to university, and I wouldn't have done it anything differently. Um, blah 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 blah. I wish they were back with. With WWF and the rest of the foundation, but stay with me in the WWF. I can keep an anchor there and somehow get them back in the WWF. If they ever choose to come when this whole of their affair came about with uh, Vince and Brett, the first thing I did was call Vince that night. Um, he said he didn't want to be on the road for a few days, pretty much. Um, when your brother punches your boss, right? Like he's very close with Brett obviously so i think of it like this one second so this is um this is gonna be the uh blue blazer outfit that that owen hart he was in the wwe when it and when he came in um he hated the character i'm pretty sure he did not like the character he wanted to be himself um He wanted to be himself type thing. So when you're looking at Vince McMahon, he's someone who was into satanic rituals, obviously. If you if you heard anything about like his lawsuit where he was defecating on John Laurinaitis and whoever the woman was in the situation during a sex act, you can see that it was a sex ritual. Like Vince McMahon is a He's the reason why he got to the top of the whole wrestling business is because he was doing rituals. So we know this guy's evil. We know he has a mind for like he's gonna get revenge. So um, Owen Hart kept turning down like things that would degrade him. Like they wanted him to have go for an angle that would have him cheat on his wife, that would have him do some disgusting things, right? And I don't know if he's a Christian. I, I, he just wanted to, he was a family man, you know? He wanted to keep his morals. He, he was someone who was not willing to sell a soul to business. And that, that's respectful. I really respect him for that. Uh, another thing with Vince McMahon is he got knocked out by Bret Hart. And Owen Hart, when he tried to get out of his contract, he was like, please just let me out. I don't feel comfortable working for you. And Vince McMahon was like, no. We're going to keep you, but I'll give you more money. So he wanted to keep him there for a purpose. And they switched the hooks when, because uh, he fell from such a far, a far distance. They switched the hooks that uh, are normally used for someone suspending from such a high height to one that can clip off easier just before he went on there. And Owen was saying he was concerned about it. He was saying that he had so many different thoughts going through. I'm pretty sure that Vince McMahon put him in the blue blazer suit or the blue blazer outfit because he knew he was going to kill him. Apparently, Vince McMahon was looking towards the ceiling the whole night, all that. I see it maybe as a humiliation ritual. Maybe that he planned to kill Owen, but... He wanted it to do it. Wanted to do it in a way where, like, 
you're going to be this character that you wanted to get away with. You're not even going to die as yourself. You're going to just... You know, all these type of things, right? Like, there's no no way that Vince McMahon is not smart enough to do something like that. He has ties to the mafia in New York. Like, there's... N if you're really thinking about it and you know anything about the wrestling business, you know it's very tied in with um, not only the mafia, especially New York. Like, that's where his territory was. Um, but with organized crime in other places, like Hollywood used to use it as a, um, whatever. I, I know that Jake the Snake Roberts used to say that, uh, wrestling promoters would pimp out the male talent to women that were in the front row. Okay. And you can look that up. Like, I don't know if it's true. I was not alive in the seventies. I was not around the stuff. But you can just tell that wrestling was just... It's like a circus. They would... It was, they're like carnies type thing. And you know... You never know. Like it's always some type of sketchy thing. When you're dealing with like... People who are never in one spot. Um, another thing too is they didn't have cell phones back then. So you, you never know what was going on. That's just what I think. Like I, I really think that... Um, Owen Hart was possibly had a hit put on him because of the stuff that went down with Bret Hart and all that and I I don't know I find it quite interesting that they were, that he died in the blue blazer suit rather than like why would they, re they I guess the only reason they revived the gimmick is because he kept turning other things down but I really, I think that Vince McMahon is a smart enough businessman, smart enough man in general to uh, do some things purposely but make it not look like an accident. And we know Owen's wife, um, she had to, she spent a lot of years fighting in court and then came down to it, she figured out that Vince wasn't going to get jail time and then kind of dawned on her that all of it's just for money, like... I don't know. I just think that I'm with the rest of the people that that think that uh, Vince McMahon definitely set this up. I don't know if his family thinks that, but I, 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 I really, truly think that he did. Because when you're dealing with someone who's doing ritualistic... Uh, <laughs> rituals... Ritualistic rituals, figure that one out. That's so funny that I even said that. Yeah, that is one of the dumbest things I've said on this YouTube channel. Um, they're doing Crowley sex rituals, like sex magic to, I don't know, get his powers. If you look through like the case and stuff, of John Laurinaitis and the woman that he was sex trafficking, you'll see, right? Um, yeah, and I know there's more deaths in, uh, wrestling and WWE that I will be taking a look at, right, but they more seem to be, rather than Illuminati hits, they seem to be, like, just mafia hits, like, I don't really, like, I, I honestly could not find much about the Hart family, when you have 13, when you have 10 kids and you're around, so that many wrestlers all the time, like maybe there's some type of thing going on. I couldn't find anything about Stu being a Freemason. I couldn't find anything about that. So if anybody has information about that, about any of these people having connections to Freemasonry, that would be perfect. Um, yeah, just some weird circumstances. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? We're going to do proper outro. All right, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, you know, do your best in your daily life to just be loving and kind to others, and put your own feelings aside. If you're in a bad mood, if you are having a bad day, just pray to the Lord Jesus that he just takes that off your shoulder, takes that out of your heart, and that you can show love to your neighbor. Um, if there's any other topics you guys would like me to cover, let me know in the comments. I, uh, I still look at my comments. I'm still, 
I'm still around. There's just not a lot of a lot of stuff going on right now that's uh, piquing my interest. It, I uh, I don't know. Either way, God bless you guys, and I will see you for the next one.